Hey everybody, I'm Tim with Tim Heron Shooting. I'm putting together this video to kind of get into the weeds, so to speak, um, with the term that I think a lot of people are familiar with, but unfortunately comes comes with a, a bit of misunderstanding or, or, or mystery as to what shot calling actually is um, and how we apply it to our shooting, um, both just from a, from a diagnostic standpoint as well as from a practicality standpoint. Um, what shot calling is, is your ability to be able to read what the sites, what the sites are telling you the very moment that the front sight begins to lift and recoil or how the dot lifts and recoil the moment that we fire a shot. Um, and, and there's a lot that goes into that. What shot calling is not is looking past the sights after you fired a shot to kind of look for validation on a target, right? So there, there's kind of that, that school of thought that shot calling is kind of like your ability to follow through and, and basically follow the sights back to a target to kind of look through the sites again or look at a target then to kind of validate your work. That's not shot calling. Um, uh, with, with, with regards to kind of like rifle shooting or defensive pistol shooting, you're actually following through, right? To learn and understand kind of what that hit did to a potential target as well as and kind of like how that target reacted to the shot that you have, right? That's, that's different than actual shot calling. What shot calling is, is again, your ability to read what the sights or kind of listen to what the gun is telling you um, based on what that sight picture looked at looked like the moment up to, um, kind of before, up to, and including when the gun goes off in recoil, right? So it's, it's being able to, to kind of anchor the rear sight and then be able to align the front sight, right? So we get a really good sight picture. And obviously if we were looking at this sight picture, on this particular target right now, if nothing else changed in how we're holding the sights onto the target, right, and we did our best to hold the sights still all the way through the press of the trigger and the resultant bang, as the gun went off, we can expect that that shot lands perfectly center in the middle of that target. But obviously, that's not always the case. Well, what causes those issues? What causes my point of impact to be different than what my point of aim was. And a lot of people disregard the information from the gun or from the sights before or during the trigger being pulled. So they align the sights up just like this, right? Or just like this or whatever happens to be. And they align the sights up to what they feel is going to be the best, the best sight picture indicative to the shot that they want to fire. And then they almost disregard this sight picture and this sight alignment while they're pressing the trigger. So they don't see the small nuances that actually steer the sights a different direction. So they don't see, let's say as a right-handed shooter, they don't see the input that they're applying to the trigger that causes the sights to drop here before the resultant lift and recoil as the shot is being fired. And then of course the, the, the sights being lifting and recoil, of course, is kind of like, think of it like a movie where the director says, cut, right? And, and your cue to cut or, to, or to, to cease recording any more information visually um, about the shot is when that front sight or that dot starts to lift and recoil. But it's very important for us to be able to see that information. Again, all of that steerage from the sights as the, as the front sight, right, starts to lift or starts to move around or as maybe fatigue sets in. Um, maybe as we, as we start to just see some movement, maybe we, we've got back, you know, we've taken a, a five to seven yard run to a position and we superimpose the sights on the target and we end up with a sight picture that looks like this or we end up with a sight picture that looks like this, right? But that doesn't tell the whole story. I might hold the sights here, but as I'm applying that input to the trigger, I might end up driving the sights over this direction or low before this, the front sight begins to lift and recoil. 
If we were looking at this with a dot, right, we would end up with kind of anchoring our glass to the target. We have a dot that's, that's somehow in the center, right, just like we want to see. But as I'm starting to manipulate the trigger, I end up either kind of healing or anticipating the gun or the dot. So the dot ends up or the, the muzzle ends up a little high before the dot lifts and recoils. So I end up with a sight picture that was just like maybe this before the dot then lifts out of the glass or lifts immediately as the shot is fired. That subtle information is what we're looking for in order to get good at shot calling. Um, I've put together a, 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 an exercise that utilizes basically one target um, that you're gonna actually fire on down range, as well as keeping another target just like this. And I like to keep about five to six pasters that I'll maybe I'll number or, uh, you know, it's, it's totally up to you, but I'll use that next target next to me um, as a means of being able to, to kind of plot what I feel like my called shots are while trying to, to listen or read all of the information from the sites. Um, like I said, shot calling itself is your ability to be able to read what the sites are telling you before, up to, and during when the shot lift, you know, when the sights lift and recoil as the shot is sent down range. I don't need any further information from the sights. So following the sights back down to the target after the shot's been fired, right? And that, tr that traditional sense of follow through isn't needed. Because if I'm following through, especially like in practical shooting, if I'm following through on the target, basically I'm taking a second or a third um, unneeded sight picture, right? I'm taking an extra sight picture that's unneeded for a target that I've already engaged. So let's say just in, for example, in like USPSA or IDPA, we typically, every paper target gets two shots each on it, right? And in order to be as, as, efficient as possible in how we shoot the gun or in how we run a stage, I only want to, to give as much, I, I want to give as much attention as I possibly can to the shot as it's being aimed and then as it's resultant lift and recoil. And then if I have to take a second shot, I'm of course going to let the sight settle back down to the target. And then the moment that the sights begin to lift and recoil again, I'm done. I don't want to spend any extra time letting the sights come back down for a third unneeded sight picture if what I need to be doing is moving my eyesight and moving the sights to another target, right? Because I've sent two shots on this target. I need to know where they're at or where they went the moment that they fired and not spend any more attention on this particular target if I don't need to, right? This is how we build efficiency in our shooting. Um, this is how we get faster in our shooting. Um, so what I've done is I put together, like I said, a, a small little short kind of snippet of, uh, of how I start to work on the shot calling process, um, like on my own. So it, uh, what you're going to see is of course in this, in this video is me in an indoor range. I'm going to be aiming through the camera and you're going to be able to see the sights lift without, of course, the, the resultant bang or the concussion or the movement of the gun in your own hands. And you're gonna be able to pay very close attention to what the sights are doing all the way up to and including when the gun goes off. And then I'm, after I take five or six shots, I'm gonna set the gun down and I'm gonna to start to plot where each of those shots or where I believe each of those shots landed. How I do this, of course, is I'm gonna set my brand new nice target that's clean, far, the, far enough distance away from me that I cannot see, nor am I tempted to start looking for holes or looking for validation on the target as I fire a shot, right? I wanna put the target out far enough so that I, I'm not tempted to look past the gun to see where my hits are. What I wanna do is I wanna stay as honest and true to myself as possible. So as I take a shot, bang, I might set the gun down or I'm immediately going to divert my attention away from the target and just kind of recording the information in my vision, in my brain of what I saw the moment that the sights lifted and, and of course the, the brief moment before the sights lifted and recoil, that's gonna tell me all of the information I need about where I believe that, that point of impact to be on the target. And then I'm gonna take a target, I'm gonna take a small paster and on the target next to me, I'm going to plot where I believe that shot to have happened. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can do this one shot at a time, which is kind of how I, I put this drill together um, in, in classes. And then for more advanced students, I will actually have them draw the gun and take basically six shots with six, obviously uh, 
site pictures to, you know, one, and then let the site settle to three, four, five, six. Then they're gonna holster the gun, again, divert their attention away from the target and start to begin to plot, right, in, in detail. They're gonna run through their mind in detail where shot number one, where shot number two, where shot number three, and so on and so forth went on the target or where they believe those impacts to be. And then of course, we then take that target and we will compare it to their plot or to their actual called shot, or right, or their, their point of impact target to look at the two and start to put two and two together on how good are they listening to the sights or the dot on their gun, as well as then how they're able to plot their shots and compare that plot to the actual target that they're firing. So as we continue on this, stay tuned. All right, so as I'm aligning the gun through the camera, I'm gonna fire six rounds in succession. I can't see the target, the hits on the target because it's about 25 yards away. But as we see hit number one, now I want you to watch how the sights align for hit number two. That one looks to be a little bit low, a little low and left. Um, that one, of course, as I move the sights up a little high, so that was shot number three. Shot number four looks like it's probably gonna be centered, but a little high. Shot number five, and I'm a little low right on shot number six. Now I may not um, have, have numbered these, my pasters in the correct order as to when I shot each one. But what I did then, of course, is I turned my attention away from the target. Now I'm gonna utilize the target right next to me and I'm gonna take my pasters and I'm gonna utilize those pasters to do nothing more than plot where I believe each of those impacts to be. Now again, at 25 yards, I am not able to see the, the holes in the target or the impacts in the target at an indoor range. Um, so uh, like I said, I, I'm kind of maybe, maybe plotting these in the, in the incorrect order or incorrect sequence as the shot was fired. However, I do remember that I had a couple, one was a little low left center A zone, one a little low right center A zone. And then as I kept moving my point of aim a little higher, right, as my hands are kind of shifting the gun up and down and left and right, I'm very confident that those shots are all in the A zone, but I should have a cluster in the upper third of the A with a couple, one a little low left and one a little low right of the A zone. And as I reel the target back in, uh, you can see that upper quadrant's looking pretty close. And up, uh, yep, there's that lower left shot as well as the lower right. So what I'm gonna do is I reeled in the target. Now I'm gonna compare my plot to what exactly, what my impact was. And as you can see, the comparison there is very, very similar. So here we are from another vantage point. I've taken the camera and I've kind of put it back in a kind of third person view and I'm gonna load the gun and I'm gonna shoot this a little bit differently this time. So now I'm going to fire an individual shot. And once I fire that individual shot, I'm gonna set the gun down immediately. Again, you can see me dip my head down, divert my attention away from the target. And I'm gonna plot each shot individually one by one until I, of course I've reached the, my, my six shots. And I'm gonna then compare my, my plot to um, what my actual hits were on the target and see just how close or, or see just how good I am at listening um, to, to the firearm, listening to the pistol and listening to the sights as they tell me everything that's needed about the information, you know, uh, uh, tell me everything that's needed as I'm firing the shot so that I don't have to allow the, the sights to return back to a shot and kind of look for validation on the target. I'm allowing just the sights to lift and recoil to be all the validation I need about um, you know my ability to, to confidently call that shot. So I think I believe I got one more shot here and I'm gonna finish up with take my last paster where I believe that shot to end it up. Now I'm gonna reel in the target. And of course, this is, this is how I run this drill in my classes. So we run the targets generally out to about 25 yards again to reduce that that tendency to want to look past the sights or look at a uh, look at a particular hole in the target. I want that validation to be just by what I saw from the sights, right? And this takes a little bit of work. It takes some practice to do this. I don't expect it to be perfect all the time. And as you see from my plot, as well as from where the shots are landed, right? I'm pretty close. But obviously, you know, listening to that that information, I, there's still a little bit more I can kind of gain from where those where those hits are versus 
where I am believing those shots to be based on just what the information from the sites is telling me. So as you can see in those, those two small video clips there, um, you know, what it is I'm actually doing and what, what information I'm, I'm gaining from the gun and the gun and the sights only as I'm pressing the trigger. Um, pressing the trigger, of course, and watching what the sights are doing all the way up to and including, again, what the sights start to do as they lift and recoil. So a couple of key points to take away from this. One is I have to blend both the aiming process, right, and my vision and grip in with my ability to press the trigger, you know, with, without or with as minimal movement on the gun as possible to keep the sights from steering left, right, up or down. But being able to do that and blend those two things together so that I can see any inputs that I provide to the gun that might move the sights. So uh, a lot of people, of course, they, they align the sights up, right? And they think of like sight alignment as just one step in the firing process. And then once they get the sights aligned where they want to on the target, they almost disregard holding the sight still in an effort to then just spend all of their all of their attention on firing the shot. So sights are good, okay, disregard. Now I'm gonna just focus on pressing the trigger or ooh, the sights are good and they try to capture that moment just instantaneously and that's what ends up then jerking the trigger because they're trying to, they're trying to capture that one moment instead of trying to record the entire moment um, with, with the trigger. So I don't want you to think anymore about like sight picture. I want you to think about it as like sight movie, right? Because it's what we're trying to do with the trigger is instead of treating it like a shutter to a camera and trying to capture that one brief moment in time where the sights were perfectly still, it's I, I want to be able to kind of press record through the trigger as a result to be able to, or as a, as a key takeaway in, in recording the information just a touch before, up to and including when when the gun actually fires. The, the only time that I get to then disregard anything beyond that is once I've been able to capture what the sights, how the sights lifted and recoil, right? Again, that's kind of that, that director saying, cut, right? And that's, that, that's our movie as it's recorded from each individual shot. So how do I do that? Well, one, of course, just like we talked about, I've got to be able to hold the gun and hold the sight still all the way through whatever input I apply to the trigger. Secondly, is I have to be visually aware of all of that information as it's happening. So uh, I know a lot of newer shooters, you know, they really struggle with, oh my God, the gun's going to go off and they tend to blink or they flinch or they, you know, they tighten up or something happens, right? Because it's, it's unnatural to have the gun fire in the hands. It, it's something that you know, like our, our normal, like human, uh, human response is almost like a survival instinct, which is to close the eyes or to blink or to flinch because, right, it's, it's not natural to have an explosion go off two feet in front of your face. So it's overcoming that, uh, that inclination to want to blink or want to, to flinch away from the shot. You just simply have to kind of let the gun do the work. Your job is to hold the gun and hold the sights as still as possible. And again, utilizing the trigger as a continuation of your ability to hold the sights as still as possible all the way through the firing sequence of the gun going off. And then being able, again, visually to pay attention to all of that information as it's happening in real time. Um, secondly, again, disregarding any information after the fact. Um, the only time that I want to take a second or a third sight picture or an extra sight picture is if I saw something in that initial shot calling sequence, either on shot number one or shot number two or whatever case may be. And I know I need, I need to take a makeup shot because I didn't get enough information or I didn't read what the gun was telling me um, for that particular shot um, well enough to call with confidence where that shot's gonna be. I'm then going to allow the sights to return back to that target so I can start that sequence one more time to call a, a much better shot, of course, for either that second time or that third time or fourth time or whatever the case may be. Getting used to, again, listening to all of the information that the gun is telling you about the shot as it's fired allows me to then to take that makeup shot extremely fast and then be able to move the gun on to something else, which allows me then to like build not only my confidence level in how I'm able to do things much faster, but also build that confidence level to where 
I don't need all of that extra validation. I'm just taking the information as it's given to me from the gun and moving on, right? So I, anyway, I hope that this, that, you know, this, this bit of information, I know this, this video kind of is a little long-winded, but I hope this information helps you um, in order to better your own shot calling ability and to understand now what shot calling is, what it isn't, and how to get better at it. So until next time, stay safe, guys.